So then guys, what I've got here today is the Geekcom GT Series Mega. And this is a right powerhouse of a small mini PC. Now, what I will say straight away, maybe in sort of CPU single core score, it's not gonna be as fast as say a Mac mini with an M4 inside of it. But this mini PC does have a lot of advantages over one of these right here. And today I want to go over why potentially even an Intel option might still be good for you if you're not opting to have the most powerful sort of mini PC out there, but yet still quite powerful enough and actually getting a lot more extra bits and pieces inside a device like this. So first of all, let me show you the unboxing of this Geekcom GT Series mini PC. So we can see that it was quite a simple unboxing and everything. Everything comes inside of here, so it's right easy to get out. We've also got the power cable, a small kind of brick, I wouldn't say it's that big, and also we've got the HDMI cable to use too. After this, I connected up this mini PC to a monitor and also a keyboard and mouse, and we were ready to go in no time. Now, one thing I do love about Geekcom PCs is that they've got no kind of bloatware on them. This is literally like kind of a sort of clean version of Windows 11. There's no extra kind of softwares or things like this, you know, to maintain your PC, what a lot of other manufacturers give out there. You literally get the vanilla kind of Windows 11 experience all stripped out, so it's really, really nice and quick with this. You don't have to remove any kind of rubbish with that. But you're probably wanting to know, well, what kind of specs do we have inside of this mini PC? Well, let me quickly go over them now. We have the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H, and this comes with 16 cores and 22 threads inside of this. And that means that we've got six performance cores, and then we've got eight efficiency cores. And those performance cores can go up to 5.1 gigahertz, which is really, really impressive. And then also we do have some two lower E cores as well, what are quite good. And also this gives a bit more of a boost up there. We've also got things like um, Intel AI Boost, and we've also got Intel Arc iGPU, what's really, really useful. And then this mini PC can actually take up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM inside of it. And then we also have two M2 slots inside of them. One of them can actually take a standard PCIe sort of M2 one, and the other one can take a 2,242 slot. And we've also got Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and like I said, Windows 11 also built already on here. And one of the key advantages what this Geekcom PC has is the ability to upgrade the insides like we can see right here. You can upgrade the RAM what's inside of us. I've got 32 gigabytes. And like I said, we can go up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. And then we can also expand out the storage too. And this is really, really great to see. Whereas say the likes with the Mac mini, we've only got say 256 gigabytes of storage on the base amount. And then we've only got 16 gigabytes of RAM. This is double the amount of RAM. And we've also got a two terabyte NVMe inside of here. So we're talking eight times the size of what the storage is inside of a Mac mini. And that definitely what I'm saying straight away is, you know, that is a big advantage of what you're getting here with the GT series. And just to show you guys here, I want to show you some, some of the performances sort of differences between both these devices. And let's start out then with the CPU. Now, first of all, we've got Cinebench 2024, single and multi-core score here. And I really wanted to start with this one because it it shows that obviously doing different benchmarks can give you different scores. So you can see here I've got the M3 with the eight core, the M4 with the 10 core, and then we've also got the GT Series 9 with its 16 cores, obviously it's got 22 threads too. But you can see that even just in single core performance, obviously we knew the M3 and the M4 can beat out the Ultra 9 here, and obviously it's doing that. But just look at the actual multi-core score, what we're getting here. We are literally getting like almost double, over double of what the M3 got, and just look at it compared to the M4. It is way, way ahead here with doing Cinebench 2024. And this is amazing to see here in multi-core performance. Now, like I said, Cinebench is one type of test we could do, but I also ran Geekbench 6, as you can see right here. And I'm gonna tell you this now, the score was quite different. And do remember that we need to actually take samples from different sort of benchmarks out there to get a full on picture. Remember, Geekbench 6 is not the be and end all out there. It is not the definitive way of actually judging how fast the machine is. It does different types of tests and have a look at the scores you can see right here. 
You can see now then with single core performance that obviously the M3 and the M4 is definitely ahead here in the 3000 kind of score sort of range there, where we're only getting about 2,600 just under that with the GT series and single core. But then if you look at multi-core performance, look at this, we always got 12,000 with the M3 eight core version. The M4 obviously is really, really powerful here at 15,288, but then for multi-core on the GT series, it got 14,033. But do remember, I'm flicking back here to Cinebench, it was a very different story where actually the GT series was way out in front. And like I said, this is one of the key things you got to take away that different kind of benchmarks, you can get different scores for different kinds of reasons. But moving on from this then, what about say graphic sort of scores? What did we get here? Well, I think the best thing we can actually do for this is not actually run a load of benchmarks and things like this. Let me run some games for you. What can run on this device right here and also can run on the Mac mini. And let's compare the differences that we got. So first of all, I ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider and this was at high settings that we got here. And then we have a look here then on my monitor that I ran it on. The M4 in frames per second at high settings, we got around about 46 frames per second. Now obviously this is running through Rosetta 2 to make this work, but still it got 46. Whereas the GT7 with that Ultra 9 chip inside of it, it got 49 frames per second. So just slightly more there. It's very, very very similar what we got there. And then next of all, I tested out Cyberpunk 2077. And do remember that Apple are planning to bring out their kind of native version of Cyberpunk 2077 in 2025. So obviously this is using crossover what I'm gonna do now. And also the next game after is using crossover. But let's have a look then at the differences that we got right here. Well, again, as you can see, I ran the benchmark tool and obviously it was doing quite a good job here. Now, what I would say is then when we look at this chart now, what I actually decided to do was run both these games at 1080p low settings and then on the M4 to get a better kind of frame rate and things like this I actually run FSR 3.0 because it's actually compatible with this it actually works and then with the GT series I ran the Intel XE version of this because it actually has their own version of that where you can actually work on Cyberpunk but look at that we're almost neck and neck here we got about 53 frames per second and 54 frames per second this is what the benchmarking tool was telling us from both of these devices we're almost neck and neck here but like I said, do remember that Cyberpunk 2077 is being fully optimized and created for the likes of, say, um, Apple Silicon. So the M4 Mac Mini will be even more compatible. So maybe we will get higher frame rates when that comes out officially. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. But the last game that I decided to test, and this was on crossover again, was classic GTA 5. And again, I ran the benchmark tool and everything. And you can see we're getting sort of hundred sort of speeds and everything. And this is quite good to see. But let's have a look at the chart and see what we got overall. We can see then with the M4 with the 10 core inside of it, we were getting around about 104 frames per second on average there. Well, it's pretty impressive to see. But then with the GT series, with that um, Ultra 9, we got 111 frames per second. So a little bit more there. But do remember, obviously, we're running this on crossover on the Mac Mini, whereas we're actually running this natively here on an Intel chip with the actual Geek Gun machine. Now, remember one thing, when we did do these tests, we had 32 gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of RAM. And obviously, Apple Silicon distributes its RAM how it wants to. And the same here with Windows 2. We can actually dedicate more RAM if we want want to do that to say the memory so you know the video memory so the VRAM but obviously that was what's the score here but with RAM as a whole like I said with the Mac Mini as we saw earlier when we stripped this down we could actually get up to 64 gigabytes of RAM inside of this with where with the M4 version not the M4 Pro with the Mac Mini this starts at 16 gigabytes obviously you can go up to 24 but the maximum we can go up to is 32 gigabytes but once you've set how much RAM you want inside your Mac Mini that is it, you're stuck at that amount of RAM. So, you know, that is one disadvantage there. Whereas we saw with this, we can open it up, change the amount of RAM whenever we want to. And to be honest, a very similar sort of story with the storage too. Like I showed before, obviously the Mac mini comes with only 256 gigabytes of storage. Whereas we get a two terabyte SSD inside of this Geekcom machine. And so obviously that's far more, it's eight times more. And there's even expansion to put another amount of storage, another sort of M2 
into sort of um, card inside to expand that storage out even more if we wanted to do that. And just in case you wanted to know, I actually did a disk speed sort of test with the storage that we're given inside this and also what we get inside the Mac Mini. And it's quite interesting to see. You can see that the Mac Mini with 256 gigabytes, it gave us a read speed of about just over 3,000 and about 3,400 for write speed. But just look at the GT Mega here with the two terabytes, you know, over double the amount of read and write speed. It is far quicker in the 7,000 read speeds and the 8,000 just about in the write speed there. It is truly, truly impressive. And like I said to you guys, you can even put another bit of storage inside of this too to, you know, double that up and have that at the same sort of speed. And yeah, we've only got a measly just 256 gigabytes in here and the M4 one is not that fast. M4 Pro is a bit more faster, but nowhere near still as fast as what you get inside one of these. So I'd hate to say it's another kind of win here to geek on what we're getting here with the actual storage. And something else what I believe where there is also another big game is to do with all of the ports that we get on both of these machines. So with the Geekcom, I can tell you now we're definitely getting far more ports inside of it. We have four USB 3.2 ports. These can go up to 10 gigabits on this, what is really, really impressive. We've also got the headphone jack too. And then flicking around to the side, you've got a full size micro SD card or SD card, standard SD, you could put micro SD into an adapter, I suppose. But yeah, standard size one there. And then on the rear, this is where we're getting the most ports here. We've obviously got the power adapter, but we've got two HDMI ports here. We've also got USB 4 ports, two of them in USB-C sort of size there. What is fantastic to see, another USB 3.2 up to 10 gigabits port and the USB 2.0 port. And then we also got two 2.5 gigabit ports here on the rear for ethernet. Whereas with say a Mac mini, you've only got two USB 3 ports here at the front that are USB-C, and then there's no USB-A ports whatsoever on this. But then on the rear though, we do actually have three Thunderbolt 4 ports or you know USB 4 ports on the back here, HDMI and also a gigabit. But if you are a person who's needing more ports, then obviously the Geekcom does win out here, definitely, especially in USB-A ports. There is definitely six of them and there is none on here. One other thing I would also comment about is to do with thermals and fans. Now what I would say is that I've tested both of these devices and the Mac Mini can go up to over 100 degrees with its M4, whereas with Geekcom they like to actually keep the chip inside of us around about say 80 degrees. Obviously this is an x86 chip so yeah keeping it cooler does help and Apple do like to push it out but one thing I would also say is that the fans are a little bit more noisier inside the Geekcom compared to the Mac Mini. You know Apple like their chip to go really hot then they start to like to cool it down. But obviously, you know, if you don't really push both these out too far, then you should be okay. This only started kicking in when you really, really started doing some extensive sort of 3D gaming and things like this. And the other question you're probably also wanting to know is, what about if I did say a video export? What kind of sort of speeds are we seeing there? Well, I did Adobe Premiere and I did an export of a 10 minute video and have a look at the results here. So this export was done at 4K, HEVEC, 8-bit, and you can see here that the M4 10 core completely Completed this in 275 seconds. Whereas the Ultra, the i9 or the 9 Ultra, this actually did it in 294 seconds instead. So yeah, this was definitely interesting to see here, but really we're only talking just under sort of 20 seconds sort of difference here in the export. It's not really a lot between both of them. And I think that's also a big conclusion as well with both these devices. Now Mac and Windows offer, you know, very similar kind of softwares now on both and they're doing very, very well. But I think then it was also a choice of what you prefer. Do you prefer Windows or do you prefer Mac OS? I don't think one is better than the other, in my opinion. I think, you know, there's more customization, more abilities in Windows, whereas Mac is a little bit more simpler to use here. So yeah, it depends on what your actual needs are. But then the big crunch time is what about the price then? How much does it cost? Well, the Mac mini does start out at 500 and 99 US dollars, whereas this Geekcom machine, what we've got right here, starts 
starts at 989 US dollars, but do think about all the extra ports that you're getting and things like this with it. And then also do remember that there was also some other sort of Black Friday deals going on with Geekcom right now. And you can also get an extra 5% off too. And this would actually bring down the total price to a total amount of $940 instead. But it's good to see that there are other options out there. I'm not trying to say that the Mac Mini, obviously because it's far cheaper, is better. Because do remember the second that you start adding in more RAM into this, adding in more storage, and you try to sort of spec it up with the same amount of RAM and storage as we've got in here, this is going to be far more expensive than this. So do remember that. And then also you'd get all these extra ports and everything like that on the Geekcom. So yeah, it's a matter of choice what I personally believe. But if you do want to check out this brand new GT Series Mega from Geekcom, all those details that I've just talked about with the price and also discounts and things like that, they will be in the video description below. But with that as well, guys, um, what do you think of, you know, the Intel GT series here, what we've got, or the Geekcom GT series, I should actually say. Do you think it's a great machine and is it something that you'd personally get? Let me know in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, if you want to hear the latest technology news, reviews and comparisons too, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.